Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. Today we want to take a closer look at the ZBV lifting motor that's found on the DMR Generation 1 model wire rope hoist. The video will take a look at the brake adjustment procedure and the brake change procedure. We'll begin by accessing the brake assembly by removing the fan cover off the rear of the motor. The fan is held on by a snap ring and we'll remove that first and then wiggle the fan free from the shaft. Next we'll remove the rubber sealing band. Once we pull back the rubber sealing band, we expose the area where the rubberized brake lining is, where it's attached to a disc, and the area where there's an air gap to check. Consult our chart that's attached to the video as a download for your brake size. In this case, we have a BD030 sized brake. According to our chart, the minimum air gap is 0.4 millimeters. Our maximum air gap is 1.0 millimeters. And the minimum remaining thickness of the brake material is 10 millimeters. We begin by measuring the remaining thickness of the brake material. It was allowed to be 10 millimeters minimum. I use this old pair of draftsman's calipers to measure that thickness and then I transfer the measurement to my steel rule and in this case we have slightly over 15 millimeters remaining so we have not met the minimum requirement. My next check is for the air gap between the pressure plate and the face of the magna body. For this I'll use a feeler gauge We'll insert it into this area and check when there's no energy in the brake for what this air gap is. We'll check this all the way around the perimeter to make sure it's even and that the gap is proper. I'm checking with the minimum size, which is 0 0.40 millimeters, and there's quite an extreme air gap here. So we'll want to make an adjustment to reduce that air gap. To make an adjustment on a ZBV, you must have an open end wrench to access the hollow nuts that act as lock nuts and loosen three of them around the periphery. Once those are loose, the retaining screws can be manipulated and we are going to reduce this air gap to the 0 0.40 amount. We're going to do this all the way around the circumference. for a proper feeler gauge reading. Once I'm satisfied, go back to my open end wrench and tighten my hollow nuts. Now we'll reassemble the motor. If we find that the remaining brake thickness is measured below 10 millimeters for this size, we'll have to change the brake disc. So I want to show you next how to remove the brake coil assembly to access a brake disc on the ZBB motor. 
you'll need your open end wrench and we'll have to manipulate these hollow nuts. Now that those are loose, we can remove the socket head cap screws. Remember, there are springs acting on the pressure plate, pushing between the brake coil and the brake pressure plate. They'll pretty much stay intact as long as the bolt stays inside the hollow. Once the retaining screws have been removed, the coil assembly can be removed along with the brake pressure plate and springs, and access will allow us to remove our brake disc. Notice it has a splined hub, and it fits on this carrier spline. There's also an inner wear plate that comes loose when you remove your retaining bolts. So remember for reassembly that the inner wear plate goes on first. We can just hang it there for the time being. And then the new brake disc goes on with the long hub toward the end of the motor. Once that's in place, we'll reintroduce our magna body assembly. Positioning the inner liner to mate with it. And then we'll find our tapped hole, the end of the motor. Once I have the first retaining screw started, We'll work our way around the circle, connect the other two. Starting each of them in the tap hole. Once in position, we'll check with a feeler gauge like we did when making an adjustment. We'll tighten our hollow nuts and set our air gap. Now we'll reassemble the motor. First we'll put our rubber sealing band back in place. Making sure the inside lip fits on the edge of the inner wear plate. We'll continue reassembly, put on the fan, lining up the keyway with the key, and then reinstall the snap. And we'll reinstall our fan and cover. Notice the distinguishing feature of the ZBB motor is the octagon shape of the cover and the screws that go in to hold the cover on on the side. And there would be four. This concludes our video on the ZBB motor and its brake maintenance. Look for our other videos on the DMR Generation 1 hoist.